Natasha the Unconventional Aussie and in today's video I want to talk to you about how I spent my first 25th of December as a new Muslim. Now just to give you a little bit of a background on how I would traditionally celebrate Christmas is that it's always been a really special and treasured time for me and my family. I have so many positive memories of Christmas and that goes all the way into us decorating the tree as a family, putting up Christmas lights on the house and going around the streets and looking at everyone else's Christmas lights. We would attend midnight mass on Christmas Eve every year and on Christmas Day itself, we would get the whole extended family together and eat lots of food, have lots to drink, have lots of sweets and exchange lots of gifts. So naturally growing up, I couldn't wait to be able to create new memories and create new traditions with a family of my own one day. So now that I'm living in the UK, and for those of you who don't know, I have two young daughters and an amazing husband who is in fact... <laughs> I'm Natasha, the Unconventional Aussie, and in today's video, I want to talk to you about how I spent my first 25th of December as a new Muslim. Now, just to give you a little bit of a background on how I would traditionally celebrate Christmas is that it's always been a really special and treasured time for me and my family. I have so many positive memories of Christmas and that goes all the way into us decorating the tree as a family, putting up Christmas lights on the house and going around the streets and looking at everyone else's Christmas lights. We would attend midnight mass on Christmas Eve every year and on Christmas Day itself, we would get the whole extended family together and eat lots of food, have lots to drink, have lots of sweets and exchange lots of gifts. So naturally growing up, I couldn't wait to be able to create new memories and create new traditions with a family of my own one day. So now that I'm living in the UK, and for those of you who don't know, I have two young daughters and an amazing husband who is in fact a Muslim. Um, and it wasn't up until really recently that he showed me a video on YouTube and it was about the true meaning of Christmas. Merciful Servant boasts about being the world's largest Muslim channel. The channel does two things exceptionally well. One, it convinces Muslims to mass flag videos that criticize Muhammad and the Quran Two, it convinces Muslims that Muhammad is God. This video is meant to show that the Bible, the book that Muslims tell us has been thoroughly corrupted, contains a prophecy about Muhammad. And we're supposed to take this prophecy seriously, even though the Bible's been corrupted. Consistency at its finest. The prophecy that supposedly proves that Muhammad is a true prophet is found in chapter 42 of the book of the prophet Isaiah. The narrator of the video tells us that this is a prophecy about a very special person. Merciful Servant then tells his viewers that verse 13 is clearly a prophecy about Muhammad and not about Jesus. Notice something peculiar about this graphic of Isaiah 42:13. According to Merciful Servant, the verse is about the special person who would be a warrior for God. But the subject has been removed and replaced with an ellipsis, the dot dot dot. You use an ellipsis when you intentionally omit some content. Normally you omit this content because it's irrelevant to the point you're making. But you should never use an ellipsis to completely change the meaning of the text. If Merciful Servant is being truthful with his viewers, then when we go to the actual verse to see what's been removed, we're going to find that the subject is this special person who will somehow turn out to be Muhammad. However, if the subject of the verse is someone else entirely, and Merciful Servant deliberately removed the name in order to completely distort the meaning of the text, we can only conclude that he is attempting to deceive his viewers because he knows that they won't bother to fact check anything he's saying. Let's see what the verse actually says. I'll use the same translation that Merciful Servant uses. Isaiah 42, 13. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. In Isaiah, God states that this special person will be a warrior and will 
Go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. Um, who goes forth as a mighty man? A special person who turns out to be Muhammad? No, the Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. Lord here is in all caps. When you're reading the Old Testament and you see Lord in all caps, the Hebrew word for Lord there is Yahweh. Yahweh is the omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent creator of the universe. Yahweh is the God of the Bible. So what did Merciful Servant do in this video? He went to a verse that's about Yahweh. He took Yahweh out of the verse and replaced Yahweh with dot, dot, dot. Then he told his viewers who trust him to always tell them the truth that this verse is about the special person that God would send as a prophet. It's about Muhammad. You have to be a special kind of dishonest to do something like this. And your followers have to be a special kind of stupid to fall for it over and over and over again. Those of you who aren't Muslims are probably shocked that Muslim apologists could be so blasphemous and deceptive in their efforts to prove that Muhammad is mentioned in the Bible. You're probably thinking, how desperate can Muslim apologists be that they would remove the name of God from a verse and then try to convince people that the verse is about Muhammad? Oddly enough, most Muslim viewers won't be bothered by this in the slightest. As long as you're trying to exalt and glorify Muhammad, they just don't seem to care whether you're being honest or not. They don't even care if their apologists deify Muhammad. When Muslim apologists take a verse that's clearly and indisputably about Yahweh, and they deliberately remove Yahweh from the verse and then claim that the verse is about Muhammad, they're calling Muhammad God. Um, and it wasn't up until really recently that he showed me a video on YouTube and it was about the true meaning of Christmas. And I was shocked. I could not believe that all this time growing up, up until now pretty much, that I'd thought Christmas and the, the roots of Christmas were for Jesus' birthday. But in fact, it actually goes back into um, the roots of paganism. And Gabriel started coming more often. He told him, I'm Gabriel, I'm bringing the message to you. And then he'll bring news to him of the past about like what happened with Joseph and Moses, things that he wouldn't have known. Because yeah. you know, he couldn't read or write, right? Oh. Oh, yeah, and then right. like amazing, miraculous things, like linguistic miracles that the yeah, Arab poets really. couldn't respond to. Yeah. So that's cool. That's but cool. He didn't, know, he didn't know it was Gabriel. The angel didn't tell him it was Gabriel. He did. He did. He did. Wrong. Sure. No, no. Even at that time, right? But, but I mean, again, he he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Yeah. Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Yeah. Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. Yeah. The people of Mecca were pagan. Perfect. Deuces. The people of Mecca were pagan. And I was shocked. I could not believe that all this time growing up, up until now pretty much, that I'd thought Christmas and the, the roots of Christmas were for Jesus' birthday. But in fact, it actually goes back into um, the roots of paganism. Um, the roots of paganism, um, 
the roots of paganism, of paganism, of paganism, of paganism. The Kaaba, an ancient stone building which was adopted by Muhammad as the chief sanctuary of Islam, is the centre of the ceremony known as Tawaf. Pilgrims must make a seven-fold circuit of the building, and what with the crowds and the blazing heat, this can be quite an ordeal. The chief object of veneration is the black stone in the southeast corner. Everyone must kiss it. <coughs> Sometimes quite a struggle is necessary to get near it. <laughs> this year, the Bega Marga Khan, accompanied by the Governor General and Prime Minister of Pakistan, performed the ceremony. The Aga Khan himself was not well enough to go, and his wife is believed to be the only woman to visit this holy place. until I took my Shahada, which was this year in October, that the conversation got brought up again of Christmas is getting closer, so what will we be doing and how will we be celebrating it now that we are a family of Muslims? I wanted to celebrate it, but he very much made it clear that he didn't want to celebrate it and he couldn't really be a part of it because of the religion and how much it went against Islam. And as I mentioned before in the video, I didn't really understand why it went against, against Islam. So this is kind of the time that um, Oz and I took to really learn about it and dive a little bit deeper into the roots and why if if we weren't if oh well if I wasn't going to be celebrating it from a religious perspective and only a cultural one, why was it such a big thing still and why was it a big no-go zone? So it's a really it's a really controversial topic amongst Muslims because I know some Muslims who quite happily celebrate Christmas because again they're not doing it from a religious aspect it's purely cultural and they enjoy just joining in the festivity fun and it's just a really nice time in especially in a western country but then I also know other Muslims who are on the complete other end of the debate saying 
no way we shouldn't have we shouldn't be having anything to do with christmas now in saying that that doesn't mean that we're disrespecting the christian tradition it just means that we have our faith the christians have theirs and that's that's just it. It, it doesn't need to go in any more explanation than that. So as I mentioned before, Christmas was starting to get closer and closer and I was still very much in the opinion of I'll be celebrating Christmas with or without Osman. And he really wanted to stress on me, especially as a new Muslim, why it was so important that I didn't celebrate it. As much as he understood why I wanted to, he really didn't want me to from a religious aspect. And so we, we actually re-watched that video and I came, I came into watching that video with a whole new perspective and a, a whole new outlook on it. And just to give you a brief summary of what I actually learned in that video. Basically, bringing a tree into your home at that time of year stems from nothing revolving around Christianity, but actually from the winter solstice period, which occurs in the Northern Hemisphere. Briefly on to the date and where the date of Christmas actually came from. As a Christian, I always believed that the um, date of Christmas was to celebrate Jesus' birthday. And it is, but we actually know based off of biblical scriptures that it's not his birthday in December. So in the Bible, it tells us that um, when Jesus was born, the shepherds were out with their sheep in the, uh, sheep in the fields. And that couldn't have been in winter. And December, where Jesus was born, is winter. So there's a little bit of a contradiction there. And additionally to that, we know that the date actually goes back to um, the Roman pagans and worshipping of the sun god, which was on, fell on the 25th of December. So there are a lot of elements coming into this, and not only from a Christian perspective, but also from the pagan perspective. So as much as I wanted to convince myself and to convince Osman that we wouldn't be celebrating it religious from a religious perspective, it was purely cultural, you can't, we can't deny whether we like it or not, we couldn't deny the fact that it is and it, it will always be based on those religious events. Um, so I, I'm not going to say that straight away i accepted the fact and was like oh, okay then we won't celebrate christmas like no it did definitely take time and it took a bit more research and i watched you know a few more videos which basically said the same thing but it just kind of made me rethink about what i value more and what i place more importance on and i needed to get a different perspective on this so i actually called up my sister-in-law and had a chat with her about it because I knew that I was going to get a really unbiased opinion. And she basically said to me, like, yeah, you, you can't celebrate it. It goes against everything that we as Muslims believe. And what she meant by this was even though I was only doing Christmas from a cultural perspective, the religious connection shouldn't be ignored. You know, just because the general culture in certain countries has almost forgotten about the religious meaning of Christmas, it doesn't mean that Allah has too. Now, as Muslims, we don't celebrate the birth of any of the prophets and the origins of the tree itself being divine is a connection to another belief system that we shouldn't be involving ourselves in when you know that the belief itself is essentially committing shirk. And for those of you who don't know, shirk is placing divinity in anyone or anything other than Allah. <laughs> <laughs> what a potato garbage in garbage out there's a muslim it's, there's somebody he became a muslim as he claimed and why because uh, christians celebrate uh, the birth of uh, jesus in december 25th i mean look how silly how stupid they excuse if this is true uh, first of all, my friend, everything in Islam is pagan. And now the, the, 5th, the 25th of December is your problem? Let us say, don't celebrate the birth of Jesus in 25th of December. Who said you have to? The Eastern Church, they don't accept that date.
like the Orthodox. This is just a day. Nobody know exactly what a day is exactly. So it's 25th, 27th, but what about your prophet? Your yeah. prophet sometime, every month, every year, his birthday is different. How do you accept that? And it happened many times he is coming his birthday in a pagan day. And what about a religion? You move to a religion kissing black stone. And you are upset from Christians celebrating uh, Christmas in the 25th of December. I mean, this is silly, stupid. But you know, when somebody is bankrupt, uh, he come with all his uh, stupidity. I'm halfway done with my umrah. I'm gonna do stuff on my door right now, and then I'm done. Kaaba, an ancient stone building which was adopted by Muhammad as the chief sanctuary of Islam, is the center of the ceremony known as Tawaf. Pilgrims must make a seven-fold circuit of the building, and what with the crowds and the blazing heat, this can be quite an ordeal. And then after Tawaf, I was doing the Safa and Marwa, it was right here. Pelting a stone cairn with seven pebbles. The tradition is a very ancient one, but they are thrown in the name of Allah and believed to be directed at the devil. Unique pictures of Mecca these, for to all who are not of the Islamic faith, it is a forbidden city. Now it's Safa Marwa, I'll show you guys how everyone is doing it right here. This is this, uh, that's Zamzam water right there. She, she then posed a question to me and she said, if what she said, so why do you want to celebrate it? Why do you celebrate Christmas? If you're not celebrating it from a religious aspect, why do you celebrate it? And I just said, you know, it's a great time. The whole family comes together and we, we have so many happy memories. You know, I love putting the decorations on the tree and it's just such a joyous time. And she said, well, does, does it have to be on that day? Why can't you pick up creating that, those traditions and making memories with your family? Why can't you just pick that idea up and move it to a day that is now suiting like your new beliefs? And obviously she was alluding to the fact of Eid. And I had no response to that. I was kind of just like, that's 
a really fair point and one that I hadn't really thought of. I was so worried Christmas Day actually came around. My friend messaged me because she was obviously under the impression that I would be really sad and I'd be really struggling not celebrating it. And she sent me a message and she was like, you know, how are you getting on not celebrating Christmas? And funnily enough, I was fine. I was actually enjoying not having the stress of worrying about it and worrying about, you know, running around the shops and, and trying to get everything sorted for this one day and then the shop's closing. So everybody else is doing the same thing and it's just such chaos and so manic. And I think as well, I think what made it a little bit easier for me was this pandemic. I think it's been a bit of a blessing in disguise for me in the sense that we couldn't go anywhere and we couldn't do anything even if we wanted to. We were on lockdown. So that made it a lot easier as a transition for me that, you know, it, like even if we had plans, we wouldn't be able to fulfill those just like everybody else. So long story short, I spent the 25th of December this year like any other day and that was creating memories with my amazing family. We went to the park and we enjoyed the day just like any other day. We had a nice meal at the end of the day and it, I just, it was not, it was just like any other day for me and I, I can't express how shocked I was to feel so okay about it. But I think I just got to the point where, like I said, I reflected and I realized what was what was more important, my beliefs or my wanting to celebrate, you know, something for not even a religious aspect. So I hope this video helps. I know that I had a few people request it um, coming from my perspective. So... I hope it helps and I will see you in my next video, inshallah. Everything in Islam is, is pagan. Going around a stone, bowing to a stone, kissing a stone, praying in the direction of a stone. All your religion is based on stones. You are, you are from the Stone Age religion. And yet you are complaining about the 25th of December. Something wrong with you, my friend. So simply, this is the religion they try to fool you to convert with. There's a guy who never saw anyone. Nobody saw him. He go to the sky. He go to down to earth. Nobody seen. There's no witnesses. You have no miracle. You have nothing. You know, an angel, he come to me and he squeezed me. And his, my wife, she said, and he told me, he said, me in her legs. And he said, in her legs. She said, did you see him? And I didn't see him. And then, and then she told me, this is for sure is an angel. Because if it's an angel, he will be happy to see my breast. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. You move to a religion kissing black stone and you are upset from Christians celebrating uh, Christmas in the 25th of December. I mean, this is silly, stupid. But you know, when somebody is bankrupt, uh, he come with all his uh, stupidity. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to what we have preached to you, he is to be accursed. As we have said before, so I say again now, if any man is preaching to you a gospel contrary to what you received, he is to be accursed.